Hi, I'm Dan McInerney. I'm the lead threat researcher at Protect AI, and I'm here with some bug bounty tips for you. So initially, I think that you should start with one project and get to know that project really, really well. And usually the easiest path to the bounties is going to be web application attacks. So tools that have a web server are generally the starting place. Get to know the code base really well. Look for the parts of the code that handle user inputs in a potentially dangerous way. And what that usually means is file uploads and file downloads. That's a, a, like a hot spot in code bases. Look at the functions they use to validate them and use a combination of static analysis tools and automated scanners to kind of get a lay of the land and kind of figure out what parts of this application might be the most vulnerable. So for instance, you can use a static analyzer like Sneak and have that spit out all of the different areas that it thinks there might be a, co uh, a bug in the code. And what I've found is like 99% of those are not actually bugs, but they will give you a kind of a good idea of where to start looking. Uh, LLMs can be somewhat useful. You can highlight a safety function in the code and then say, do you see any bypasses for this? And if you ask it in just the right way, it will give you an answer and won't say that, hey, I'm an, as an open AI large language model, the, I can't give you any answers. Uh, again, they also tend to give you false positives, but they can give you an idea of what to look for as well. So if you highlight a bunch of C code and you give it to it and it goes, hey, there's actually a better way of doing memory handling than using ALEC or whatever they're doing, then that's a good place to get started and look around for memory corruption bugs and things like that. Uh, if you really hate yourself, you can use OWASP Zap, which is a web application proxy that helps you see intercept requests that are going to a web server. I much prefer to use Burp Suite and Burp Suite's extensions because Burp Suite's extensions are really, really good. Uh, you can get pretty far with automated scans in Burp Suite. And I have found quite a few bugs, even on the Hunter platform, um, by just looking at the automated scan results and making sure I'm doing a very thorough automated scan. And then once you get a couple results from Burp Suite, that also will inform you of where in the code base you should be looking at to find other bugs. So for instance, uh, one of the first bugs I found was in MLflow, and it was in a local file include in how you got art at, uh, artifacts. So that's kind of like the files on disk. In AI, an artifact is just a, a file. It's a model file, a data file, something like that. And so other people have taken that and really run with it and looked at all the different places. And that MLflow reads or writes data to the disk or files to the disk using these artifact API calls. And they found lots and lots of patch bypasses and, and uh, attacks in those specific areas of the code. So there's like, if you're thinking of the code base as kind of like a heat map, there's usually a couple hot spots that are going to be very security uh, sensitive. Authentication code, reading files code, file upload, um, all of those kind of situations are places that you have to have very secure code if you don't want a bug. And those bugs often pay out pretty high because if you can just read any arbitrary file on the disk, then that's probably going to be a pretty high CVSS score. All right, that's all my tips for now. I will see you guys later. Ready to spotlight your skills? Join the hunt on hunter.com.